How old do you have to be to be considered a historian? How old would you have to be to author a story blended from a massive body of research? How old is a researcher? How seasoned would you have to be with technology to manipulate it in such a way as you produce a sophisticated documentary? How old? How young? How seasoned must one be to make your mark? Today we'll introduce you to a young lady who has proven to be a historian, researcher, author, and documentary producer. And how old is she? Grab your pen and paper. This young lady and her work are impressive. I think mentors like being a mentor because they'll really enjoy it. They'll enjoy the kids, they'll enjoy teaching kids, they'll enjoy helping kids. They just love helping children. Well, I'm reading better now because of her. She really does make me really feel proud of her. My mentor is a great person. When I grow up, I want to be just like my mentor. Mentoring works. Become a mentor. Hello and welcome to the Clarion Call Show. I'm Janice Liggins, your host. Today's show continues our Youth Leaders of Tomorrow series. Our guest is a young lady who blends exceptional talent in research and technology to produce an award-winning documentary. Her documentary is a historical presentation of the work of Thomas A. Dorsey in gospel music and the impact of Dorsey's work on present-day gospel artists. I learned so much from this masterful project. So will you. Take a look. Thomas A. Dorsey's leadership in gospel music is responsible for the rise of the gospel sound and the legacy carried on by present-day gospel artists. Thomas Andrew Dorsey is the acknowledged father, if not leader, of the early gospel song movement. As a composer, pianist, conductor, and organizer of choirs, his influence on the gospel sound laid the foundation for what we know gospel music to be today. Thomas Dorsey was born in Villa Rica, Georgia on July 1, 1899, to Etta Plant Spencer and Thomas Madison Dorsey. His mother was a church organist, and his father was an itinerant Baptist preacher. His first exposure to music was as a child in Mount Prospect Baptist Church, where his parents worshipped from time to time. This is where he heard sacred music, shape note singing, and spirituals, and moaning songs. In 1908, Dorsey's family moved to Atlanta. In Atlanta, Dorsey was exposed to the music, like Dr. Watson's early blues and jazz. As a butch boy selling soft drinks and popcorn during intermission in the Nickelodeon movie house, the 81 Theater, he met many live musicians, including Ed Butler a famous silent movie theater pianist. In his active pursuit of music, Dorsey would hang around the live musicians before and after shows, asking them to show him how to play songs on the piano. Dorsey received formal piano lessons from a Mrs. Graves, who had a piano studio near Morehouse College. From Mrs. Graves, he learned to read music and use proper fingering techniques. As a child prodigy, he was able to master several instruments by the time he was a teenager and began playing blues and ragtime. During this time, he also wrote many jazz songs. He even began to substitute for Ed Butler from time to time at the movie house. On August 1, 1925, Thomas Dorsey married Nettie Harper, who he first met while she was rooming at his uncle Joshua Dorsey's house. Nettie Harper accepted Dorsey's proposal for marriage after putting him off for several months to make sure he was the right one. Dorsey was overjoyed when Ma Rainey then hired Nettie as a wardrobe mistress. As a member, Nettie was able to travel on tours with the band. Having his wife near and being able to develop his unique blues and jazz styles for the mother of blues gave Dorsey peace from the conflict and self-doubt that plagued him since he began his professional career. 
Despite his wife's presence, Dorsey continued to suffer from a number of emotional struggles and personal losses that took a powerful toll on his health. While in Ma Rainey's Wildcat Band, Dorsey noticed an unsteadiness in his hands. It progressively got worse and made him incapable of playing, composing, or arranging music. This led to a deep depression that lasted two years as his condition was incurable. Quote, I knew not where to turn. It was a sad thing to me. It was hard to bear. Nettie took a job in laundry where she spent her days working for one whole year to support us. I was perplexed, sick, disturbed, and a bundle of confusion. End quote. Coming from a religious background, Dorsey, finding himself in such a low place, saw comfort in the church. There, Bishop H.H. H. Haley encouraged Dorsey, and then was reported to have pulled a live serpent out of Dorsey's mouth. This, in a sense, released Dorsey, and from that time on, he claims to have suffered no more. From 1929 on, Dorsey committed himself exclusively to gospel. Then, on August 26, 1932, during a concert, Dorsey received a telegram saying, Hurry home, your wife is sick, she's going to have the baby. When Dorsey arrived back in Chicago, Nettie was already dead. The baby, Thomas Andrew Dorsey Jr., was alive and healthy, but then his newborn son died a few days later. Quote, I entered the Pilgrim Baptist Church and looked down that long aisle which led to the altar where my wife and baby lay in the same casket. I started the walk and the procession, and the aisle grew longer and longer before me. My legs got weak, my knees wouldn't work right, my eyes became blind with a flood of tears. There Nettie lay, cold, unmoving, unspeaking, end quote. After the death of his wife and child, Dorsey was tempted to return to secular blues music as a revenge for God not saving his wife and child. Instead, Dorsey found one of his greatest inspirations, which led to his most famous song, Precious Lord, Take My Hand. Gospel is the good news of Jesus Christ, and the term gospel comes from the Bible, where the books that speak on the life of Jesus are called the books of the gospel. Dorsey believed that a gospel song was a revelation of a personal experience. Down through the ages, gospel, what? What did they say it was? You mean to tell me you don't know that good news? On down through the ages, gospel was good news. Now, if you don't know that, I will throw you out here myself. So gospel music is the good news of Jesus Christ in song. And traditionally, gospel music has been traditionally an African-American art form. But now we have um, cultures, all different cultures, singing gospel music. But um, gospel music is the good news of Jesus Christ uh, in song with a birth out of the Negro spirituals, I would say. Mr. Dorsey's being a blues pianist brought a, a blues sound to gospel music. The blues and gospel music have similar setups. The rhythms are very similar, at least the, that which Mr. Dorsey brought to gospel music. The rhythms are similar, uh, the styles are similar. Um, one of the main differences is that in the blues, the blues is usually 12 bars. Uh, gospel music tends to be eight or 16, but um, the blues sound gave more of a homey, emotional type of experience uh, to gospel music. Initially, mainstream churches did not accept Dorsey's gospel music because of its apparent secular influence. The religious music that Dorsey proposed at that time called for a drastic departure from the music practices of the large Protestant black churches in Chicago. But in spite of the old line church's objections to the music, the growth of the congregations and the churches that played Dorsey's gospel music convinced other churches to integrate gospel into their services. 
Along with writing gospel music, Dorsey was also a highly sought-after choir director and organizer in Chicago, which was considered the home of gospel. His first choir was formed at Pilgrim Baptist Church, and he co-founded the first national convention of gospel choirs and choruses. According to the Reverend Augustus A. Evans, assistant under Dorsey at Pilgrim Church, the larger the church, the bigger the choirs, and the greater the demand for good music. Consequently, the churches hired top musicians and paid them good salaries for training their choirs. Mr. Dorsey wasn't, wasn't, he sung, but he wasn't, I don't think singing was his gift. He sang from his heart, um, being a piano or whatnot, but he knew how to get the best out of singers. And uh, he worked with people like Mahalia Jackson and, and uh, James Cleveland. I think he helped develop their, their styles. Most gospel historians agree that Thomas Dorsey wrote and produced over 1,000 gospel songs, holding the copyrights for approximately 500 of those. Thomas A. Dorsey influenced many people in both life and death. He seemed to have a gift for bringing out the best in soloists and choirs. He had a deep understanding of the African-American voice and life experience. He mentored Mahalia Jackson, who was considered the mother of gospel, he worked with Willie Mae Ford Smith, Sally Martin, and the Staple Singers, and many other gospel groups and choirs. All who worked with Dorsey became better because of the experience. Thomas A. Dorsey's creation, leadership, and legacy in gospel music have changed the way people have worshipped God in song for more than half a century. His legacy lives on through the music we hear today. Please join me in welcoming the researcher, author, and producer of this amazing documentary, Ms. Adero Brooks, with her mother, Mrs. Elizabeth Brooks. Welcome, welcome, Thank welcome you. to Thank the show. You. Awesome video and documentary, Adero. Thank you. Awesome. My goodness. What caused you, let's talk about Dorsey first. What caused you to choose Dorsey uh, for your documentary? Well, in previous years when I had done National History Day, I did a documentary on the transition from Negro spirituals into modern day gospel music. And in that I highlighted Dorothy, Dorsey, mm -hmm. seeing as he's the father of gospel music. Okay. And then this year when the theme came up for leadership and legacy in history, I chose Dorsey and continued that kind of gospel train of thought. Instead, I was focusing just on Dorsey this time. How long did it take you to um, do your research? Well, I started my research in December when I got the theme, and then I actually started putting together the documentary in April, okay. so about two to three months. Okay, and so what surprised you the most about Dorsey himself when you were doing your research? How much grief he went through mm -hmm. in his life. He lost his wife, he lost his child, and the next day um, it talks about he lost a lot of friends throughout the experience. Um, he went through a depression period when his hands were shaking and he mm -hmm. couldn't play. Just how he got through all of that and he still continued to praise the Lord and create this amazing thing called gospel music that right. we still listen to today. I was going to say he is still having an impact. His work still has an impact um, on the present day uh, musicians uh, throughout the area. So that's cool. That's cool. What are your thoughts about that? How much that impact is lasting? Well, just thinking about when he created it back in the 1900s and now in the 21st century, we're still singing it. It's been modified. It's been you know, kind of changed a little but bit, but it's us. still the right. basic baseline right. of Dorsey's mm -hmm. gospel sound. Very good. That's amazing. Very good. Stay tuned. Hold on. We're going to be right back. Coming up, we're going to take a closer look at what it took to create Miss Brooks' award-winning documentary. Stay with us.
think it's important for young people to have a mentor. A mentor could be a regular, everyday person. It's just somebody there to help the child. Knowing that I had an influence in Chad makes me feel great. By having a mentor, he has someone to bounce ideas off of. He has someone to also challenge him and help him see a vision for the future. What you'll get out of it is just the satisfaction of knowing that you've helped somebody. Mentoring works. Become a mentor. Welcome back. We're continuing our discussion with young Miss Adara Brooks and her amazing documentary. Again, welcome Miss Adara Brooks with her mom, Mrs. Elizabeth Brooks. Let me ask you, uh, Adara, about uh, actually making the documentary itself. Uh, that's a lot of information tucked into a few short minutes of a documentary. Um, how many different sources did you have to go to to get all of the information? Well, I took several visits to my local library and the Library of Congress to find primary resources because that was really important. Um, so music, recordings, um, biographies on Dorsey, those things. And I also did a lot of research um, using Minister Monmouth in my interview. He was yes. a very good primary resource. Okay. He was a very good expert on okay. Thomas A. Dorsey. Okay. And what role did you actually play in putting the documentary together? I mean, there's things, I know you did the audio, the voiceover, I could tell that was your voice, mm -hmm. but you had everything from the storyline, the music, the graphics, the editing even. So what role did you play versus say mom or dad? So um, I actually put the entire thing together. So I did all the looking for the pictures, looking for music. I put it in the documentary using iMovie that Apple application, I did all the voiceovers, like you said, everything, I, I pretty much did everything. So even the storyline itself, from the beginning to end, how to tell the story? I created mm -hmm. that script and we did all that, I did all that. Nice, and how old are you? <laughs> 14. 14, Adara, that's awesome. That is awesome, I mean, if, just to think it through, is awesome and then get all of the work and the 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 documents the pictures good for you Thank good you. for you and and even to handle the interviews as well so now what are you most proud of as a result of the documentary in the of the documentary itself what are you most proud of I'm most proud of how the reactions I got from it they were mm. perfect so <laughs> um, on that snake part everyone was like, oh my gosh, yes. really? A yeah. snake out of his mouth? Yeah. Or on the part where you talked about his wife and di um, child dying, everyone got really sad that that was perfect. And your voice in that particular part mm -hmm. is perfect Thank for you. that particular part. I noticed the change, the sadness in your voice. Very good. She very got good. a lot of comments too that um, it was very professional. So, yes, yeah. from beginning to mm -hmm. end from beginning to end for sure. Um, what hurdles did you have to overcome in putting the documentary together from research or music or whatever? Oh, finding original pictures. Oh. That was so hard because people didn't just take photos like we do today. They mm. didn't do that a whole lot um, okay. back then. So finding original pictures of Dorsey to match whatever I was talking about. So finding a picture of him grieving was extremely hard okay, or right. finding a picture of him in a band those sort of things any lessons learned what did you learn from what did you learn about yourself that you can't just add everything mm -hmm. you have to know when to stop pull back and say it's done <laughs> I cannot do any more with it. It's going to be as good as it's going to be. That's precious <laughs> that is precious <laughs> did you ever think you were too young to do this no. A documentary? No, no, just didn't never. even think about it. Mm -mm. Just barge right ahead and do it. Just <laughs> go ahead and get it done. Yes. Wonderful, wonderful. And uh, you think you'll be doing more documentaries? I think I will. It's a very easy presentation style. It's creative. It's not something a lot of people would think of, mm -hmm. even though it is so easy. 
So I think it'll really help me stand out in the future if I wanted to do a presentation. Awesome, awesome. Now the competition itself, and you won first place, by the way. Yes. Congratulations. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Proud mom is sitting there. First place in the uh, documentary category. Wonderful. And you're in ninth grade? Yes, ma'am. My goodness. So who sponsored the competition? Who was it put on by? So National History Day puts it on every year. It's this huge, huge competition. There are several categories that you can choose from, and they give you this overarching theme. And from that, you can do whatever topic you want to. Okay, so what was the theme for this year? The theme this year was leadership and legacy in history. Okay, very good, very so, good. Yes. And it's countywide? Uh, the competition was countywide? Well, it starts off as a school-wide competition. Okay. And you compete in your school. Um, and then you go on to countywide okay. if you do well in your school, and then you go on to statewide, okay. and then you go on to national oh my competitions. Goodness. Yes. So where are you now with how far have you gotten along in any of those? I know you did countywide. Yes, I did countywide, and then I did statewide. Oh, nice. Yeah, I tell you. Yeah, I tell you. Um, how were the students selected for the process? Well, in um, the selection process, every school does it and then they do a school-wide competition. So based on whatever category you're in, you could either have done a documentary, a research paper, an exhibit, like a trifold board, or you could have done a performance or a documentary, mm -hmm. like I did. Okay. And you're judged within your category based on senior or junior. So high schoolers go against high schoolers and middle schoolers against middle schoolers. And then from that, you move on to the countywide competition. So whoever who is the first and second place winners, they move on. And so the people in your that you were actually competing with? I actually did not compete against anyone in my school. Oh. Um, I was the only person of my school to participate in National History Day. So I automatically moved on to the countywide. Wow, nice. And that was, that was very interesting. <laughs> But even in a countywide, you right. won first. A county, she yes, won first. Yes, I won first. Yes, and there were other documentary. Yes, there were like 10 other documentaries. Oh, wow. So you won, oh my goodness. Nice, very nice. And so looking back, would you have done anything differently? No, I, I don't think I would have. Yeah, because it, like I said before, you just have to know when to step back and I think everything I could have done I did everything I could have done yeah you did your best I did my best yes okay, very good so how does it feel to win first place <laughs> that's amazing <laughs> my mom started screaming the minute she heard my name it was it was really cool well, screaming is exaggeration yeah. Yeah, I'm very excited I'm sure <laughs> I'm sure that's awesome work yeah. that's awesome work and to, and to have it recognized yeah. so publicly and she worked really hard on it. I think she spent upwards to 70, 80 hours on this documentary. Wow. Um, every piece had to be put together. And she'd say some things and found, oh, that was only 15 seconds. <laughs> and, and all the documentaries um, could be no longer than 10 minutes in length. So, you know, she had that flexibility, but no more than 10 minutes. Okay, so you were counting seconds for right. every little piece. Yes. Very good. That's a great work for how old again? Keep reminding me. <laughs> 14. <laughs> My goodness. Not too many 14-year-olds are involved in that kind of work to that detail. So good for you. So tell me, um, who or what inspires you the most? <laughs> Your mom. mom. Oh, yes. wow, Mom. Kudos to you. Uh, yeah. <laughs> She's pretty awesome. Oh, yes. That's nice. Most of the time. Adara is also, she's highly self-motivated. Mm. Um, you know, she really likes a challenge. And I think that's why um, competitions like National History Day, Na Science Fair, really attract her because mm. she likes that little extra challenge above and, you know, over what she's doing um, in her regular school work. Nice. A good outlet for all of that mm -hmm. extra energy. Very good. Very good. So what do you see as your strengths? Well, I'm very, I'm good at a lot of things. Um, I like, I like the artsy aspects of things. I like, I love math and science. Um, and I think 
I can bridge those two very easily. Um, I'm very analytical, but I can learn if you give me a lecture or audio mm -hmm. sort of things. So I, I think my strength is that I can learn and adapt to several different things, and I'm very good at a lot of things. Very good. I know that you are involved in several things, like Girl Scouts. Very good. Yes. And then what rank are you now in Girl Scouts? I'm a senior. Oh, wow. I don't know. I'm not familiar with the Girl Scout rank, so. Okay. So you start off with Daisy, and that, those are the little, little girls. Okay. And then the next step is Brownie, and then Junior, and then you have Cadets, and then there's Senior and Ambassador. Oh, so you're one step away from the top level. Yes. Ninth grade, still. Seniors you know. are in ninth and tenth graders. Right. Ambassadors okay. are eleventh and twelfth graders. Nice, mm -hmm. nice. And you sing? Yes. I and sing. now you sing in your choir at church? Choir church. Very good. And there's something about this uh, interest in architecture. What is that? Well, um, I've been interested in architecture for a while now. Um, it started when I was in class one day and we were instructed to design a house mm. out of eco-friendly material and I designed that and it was so, so, so much fun. <laughs> um, I'm always designing things around the house, like I like to tell my mom where we, we should put things as an mm. interior designing sort okay. of. Um, so I just love that. I love all of that and it combines arts with the maths mm. and the sciences very well so it's, it's really kind of perfect. Okay. Me. And you had, uh, I understand you had a, some type of a science project that you did based yes. on architecture. Mm -hmm. Okay, tell us about that. So I did a science fair project where I created a bug resistant surface using cuticular folds. Cuticular folds. Yes, cuticular folds. They're these bumps and waves on the top layer of a leaf. And depending on how big or small they are, a bug can walk on it easily mm -hmm. or not so easily because it's so slippery. And so I used that concept and put it on a, a building material, something that you could potentially build a house out of. Mm -hmm. And if you can build a house out of something that is bug resistant, you have no more bug problems. No more bugs. <laughs> <laughs> she doesn't want to kill the bugs. She just doesn't want them around. Yeah. So, but now you, in that project, though, that was a science project. Yes. And I understand you won. I did. Oh my I goodness. won first place in my category at school and first place overall in the senior level at my school. Nice. Yes. And and so you were ninth grade. Yes. So when you won first place, you're talking about first place not just with ninth graders. Right. But Over with the ev entire high school. Even right. against seniors. Yes. Ninth, awesome. 11th and 12th graders. Mm -hmm. Awesome. And that qualified her to go to um, county, county mm -hmm. science fair. Yes. Let me ask you this one question. Um, I know that you're in a Christian school. Mm -hmm. How has that factored in to who you are? Well, I am a Christian, so it really helps to be in that environment on a daily basis. You're not struggling with being around other non-Christians. Mm. So everyone's kind of there helping you along. The teachers are helping you, other parents are helping you, the students are, we're all working towards the same goal. Okay. And it's, that's really helpful. Well, it has been a pleasure having you on the show. I am so excited about your accomplishments. Thank okay? you. At the young age of 14, Adaro Brooks proved that you don't have to wait until you're an adult to have a message or to make an impact. Adaro's documentary blew the judges away, and Adaro relied on her gifts and talents. Then she added focus, commitment, and a determination to excel. What project can you take on? A science project, a community service project, a report. Whether you're a student or adult, identify a project and give it your best. You'll be proud of yourself. Give yourself a chance to shine, and you'll be glad you did. That's it for now. I hope you enjoyed the show. Join us next time, won't you, for the Clarion Call. Until then, I'm Janice Liggins. Blessings to you.